Welcome to the Circularity Edge podcast, where we discuss the latest news and perspectives on the circular economy and issues relating to social, environmental, and economic sustainability. Join us every week when we discuss what's needed to create a sustainable circular economy worldwide. Now, here is your host, Ken Alston. Hello again, this is Ken Alston with the Circularity Edge podcast coming to you from Bogota and Medellin, Colombia. This edition is called Viva la Revolución for reasons that will become clear as we go along here. This past week I've been busy in Bogota and Medellin, Colombia, where I made several presentations and workshops, first at the third annual Congress for Social Responsibility and also at several major universities. Along the way I met the Colombian Minister and Vice Minister of Environment and Sustainable Development at an event where they were discussing the country's national circular economy plan. Now I have to give kudos to Colombia for putting circular economy matters on the government agenda, and it's in obvious stark contrast to the lack of even any drop of interest in these vital topics amongst another country government I could name to the north. How ironic is it that Southern Americans who are being much maligned and even lied about in North American politics are actually the ones paying attention Yes, I know the Brazilian president and others are in a somewhat different place, but behind the scenes I'm meeting enlightened and concerned Latinos who are actively engaging in ways I can only dream that might happen in the United States right now. Now, I'm not normally a publicly political person. I go out of my way to keep politics out of my work, even when asked about it, as I was multiple times this past week in Colombia. But in the end, I relented and when asked, what can we do about the current unsustainability of the global economy and the lack of interest amongst politicians in general? I said, Viva la Revolución! Now, certainly given the current US government stance in denying climate change and pulling out of the Paris Accord, we can't expect this US government to even contribute any sensible policies to help fix the many environmental and social issues we've created on all fronts. And please don't tell me it's all a Democratic Party or socialist hoax. I've worked actively in this arena for over 30 years. And if you're not interested in the agenda, then please unsubscribe from the podcast. But even the positive efforts of the United Nations creating the concept of sustainable development and promoting the development of the 17 sustainable development goal areas isn't enough. It's been 32 years since sustainable development was defined. And we are way too slow. Things are not getting better fast enough. Honestly, let's face it, it is up to us, individually, collectively, to do it ourselves, to rise up and say stop. This inattention to the social and environmental consequences of a primary focus mainly on the economics of global trade, on people individually and collectively, is unacceptable. We have to devise a better and more equitable version of capitalism where social and environmental capital matter, as well as economic capital. Personally speaking, I pledge to spend my personal dollars in support of businesses and even give to politicians who will take action now to help us right these wrongs. To act with speed and conviction to change from an unsustainable linear economy to a sustainable circular economy. So companies, brand creators, take note, we're putting you on notice. We prefer sustainably circular goods and services powered by clean renewable energy, valuing and safeguarding clean water, and made respecting diversity and with social equity and inclusion built in intentionally by design. If you're a company and don't know what this is or even how to go about doing it, ask me. I know how we can do this. Viva la revolución! It's time to be part of the solution or to be relegated to being part of history. It's time to choose, join the sustainable circular revolution or be left as certain politicians surely will be in the garbage dump or basuero of history where they belong to be. You've been warned. Now it's not just being circular that matters. It's also about becoming better on all levels, being regenerative, being restorative and having positive outcomes. Not just carbon neutral, let's go for carbon positive. Remember, I'm carbon, you're carbon, Please, let's be positive and not neutral or zero. Okay, rant over for today. On a personal and positive and optimistic note, I want to introduce you to a very good friend and colleague of mine, Kevin DeCuba. Today, we have an opportunity to hear from a good friend and colleague of mine, Kevin DeCuba. 
Kevin led a sustainable development team in Washington, D.C. for the Organization of American States, where I worked with him bringing the idea of closed-loop production to South America. Next, he co-founded the America Sustainable Development Foundation in Aruba on the circular economy platform of the Americas. Since 2017, Kevin has organized two major conferences in South America, the Circular Economy Forum of the Americas, which was held first in Medellin, Colombia, and last year in Santiago de Chile. And welcome, Kevin, to the Circularity Edge podcast. Thanks, Ken. Happy to be here with you. Now, you're living in Medellin, Colombia now, and um, I know you've recently been traveling around the region, researching and talking about the circular economy. What's your general impression from the countries and people you've been visiting with in the past few weeks? Well, I'm excited, actually, because uh, both you and I have been working in this field for uh, plenty, plenty years. And uh, now, finally, after, let's say, in, in recent uh, months, you can see an, an, uh, a swell up of uh, interest uh, by different actors in the society. Uh, in this case, mainly uh, the private sector and the public sector. And uh, the people who I've, I've interacted with uh, these days uh, are people that are eager to learn about what circuit economy is, uh, what value it can bring to them, and how to go about implementing it. Uh, there is where I think the biggest challenge uh, is at the moment, uh, because there is an eagerness to, to solve the problems, but uh, at the same time, there is a need for proper understanding before uh, jumping into activities. So we are at that point, I would say. And, and is there anything particular from, you know, the, the, the particular countries that you visited recently that stood out for you as highlights? Well, the countries I've visited uh, these uh, past two weeks uh, have been uh, Uruguay, Mexico, Brazil, and Chile. And uh, when you look at each country, um, in the case of Uruguay, uh, they just recently launched their national circuit economy uh, plan, which uh, basically confirms that they have been uh, already uh, engaging uh, stakeholders and working together and building a, you know, a momentum and a critical group of actors to put this forward. And that means that uh, Uruguay is basically leading the way in the sense of uh, bringing uh, key actors in the economy together and coming to a consensus about where they want to head with the, you know, at, at the national level. Uh, when you look at uh, Mexico and Brazil, these are obviously much larger countries uh, with uh, highly centralized uh, governments. And it's uh, good to see that uh, initiatives are being launched now at the level of the, the federal governments, uh, while um, also making the effort to to make sure that uh, this process is as inclusive as possible. So um, there are many other um, uh, workshops planned to visit uh, the sub-regions, uh, to engage with the local actors and involve them also in the process of uh, creating an opinion and uh, an understanding of uh, what circular economy means to them. Do you uh, think that people really understand the economy as circular deeply, or, or is there a, still an oversimplistic view of it's just closing existing loops and simply doing more recycling of existing waste streams? Where do you think people's head to? Uh, it, it depends on who you ask, uh, but I would say in general terms, many still confuse circular economy with simply a new word to for recycling. Uh, and uh, that is uh, in itself a challenge because, uh, as we all know, the circuit economy is, is a paradigm shift, it's a, it's a change in the mindset, is understanding that we need to operate in a different way as human beings uh, on this planet. So to, to step away from a, a linear economic model, which we are all locked into, and to step out of that and question and you know what, you, what it is that you're doing, and to be able, be able to be open and willing to step away from that and engage in new types of thinking, that uh, requires a lot of investment in awareness raising, education, and having proper discussions. So at this moment, I would say many still confuse with recycling or simply the conventional uh, reduce, reuse, recycle, recovery. So the, the, the traditional uh, waste, integrated waste management approaches. So 
we need to step away from that. Uh, circuit economy is significantly more than tackling uh, waste management problems. Uh, as I already mentioned, it's a paradigm shift where we are talking about si a systematic change towards uh, a new economic model, which has obviously implications to many sectors of the economy and society. So we still have quite a bit of awareness building um, to, to do here. And I believe you're working on ideas for the next Circular Economy Forum of the Americas conference. Uh, what do you think is most needed in this region to move from from just talk and awareness building to actually get to implementation? Well, I think uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's tricky because uh, on one hand, you do need to uh, invest time in doing your homework and making sure that everybody is on the same page. Because if you don't have a common overarching goal, uh, it's going to be difficult to, to, to coordinate all the efforts towards the same outcome. So in, a, in, in one, on one part, we still do need to continue to invest in education, awareness raising, and building consensus about what it is that this circular economy means. And one element that, as you always mentioned, uh, I should actually use the term sustainable circular economy, because uh, closing loops, closing cycles does not automatically mean that you're doing it uh, properly or that it's non-toxic or does not lead to unintended uh, impact impacts. So. That is a, an element that I think that will need to be uh, uh, repeated over and over again, because uh, as, as, as you're meeting more people, new people that are coming into the field, they do need to understand that. The second part is, okay, there's a group that is eager to, to want to implement things, but how to do this? And I think uh, uh, the focus should be on uh, completely recognizing that there are uh, fundamental criteria that you need to comply with in any decision making you make. So, uh, and I could enter into the, the principles, but in essence, uh, I think instead of talking about, um, you know, uh, general um, conceptual ideas, just put forward a series of criteria that help any decision maker at any level of society, whether you're a government, um, a politician or a diplomat or somebody representing the technical sector, or the government up to the level of uh, an entrepreneur or a CEO of a company. Uh, that is really need, needed because otherwise all the efforts will probably be in vain if we don't do it in a correct, in a coherent way. And how, how are things looking for um, for the next conference? Are you, uh, do you have some particular ideas? Uh, yes, one, one thing is, uh, a deep a deep dive into the circuit economy, so sustainable circuit economy, what it is, what it's for, and how we should all interpret it. The second part is public policies. Uh, the third part is looking into the uh, development of entrepreneurship, new uh, solutions and, and products that are in compliance with the circuit economy principles. And um, the academic part, which means that we need to build up a new capacity new skill sets and, uh, you know, the new generation of, uh, of experts, uh, hopefully getting them all aligned so that we all can uh, focus on the proper uh, level of interventions. As you know, Kevin, I spoke extensively in academia on my last trip, uh, both in Bogota and, um, and in Medellin, and um, I, I spoke at the conference on uh, social equity at the Universidad del Bosque. And in general, as you well know, in South America, the social aspects of sustainability are very important. Are there any particular areas where you are seeing examples of circular economy activities that help move things in the social dimension as well as the environmental one, which most people look at first? Well, I think that circular economy offers a unique opportunity to create new economic or productive activities that require uh, certain skill sets that are not too far-fetched, not too complicated. With other words, there isn't a possibility to allow the masses or large segments of the labor force to get hurt and to become an active uh, member of this whole transition process and under dignified conditions. Because at the end of the day, 
all this, uh, this whole idea should result in positive outcomes for the society uh, in general. So uh, the circular economy offers unique opportunities to endeavor into new activities, new skill sets, new needs for uh, new knowledge. And, and where I think that uh, with the existing infrastructure that uh, exists in the, in the region, uh, the, uh, the availability of the universities, uh, research centers, and uh, so basically what is already in place uh, just needs to, you know, to understand and recognize circular economy as an important direction to, to head to and um, concentrate their, their efforts towards this end. And if that happens, I see that uh, within a short to really a rel a relatively short time frame, we can get a new generation of uh, labor force that has better working conditions, uh, better pay and doing interesting work. Yeah, as you know, I, I, um, I spoke at the Universidad de, de Antioquia as well as Universidad uh, El Bosque. And in both cases, I noticed that they were implementing innovation hubs, which neatly brings together that element of entrepreneurship and, and the academic side. And I think um, I think the addition of circular economy know-how into those innovation hubs is going to be really important going forwards. But what the circular economy would you like to leave with uh, our listeners to the Circularity Edge podcast today? I think that uh, this whole topic of circular economy, as I mentioned earlier, it's a paradigm shift. It's a new way of understanding how we as human beings uh, should uh, live and thrive on this planet. And it's basically inspired by nature. Nature has been showed, has showed us over and over for millions of years that all the species that live in the ecosystems interact in a, in a, in a positive sense. So no uh, nutrient or any resource that is used uh, goes to waste. Everything becomes a nutrient for another process, another cycle in nature. So in essence, if we as human beings use our collective intelligence, our collective abilities and the resources we have uh, in an intelligent way, I, I really believe that we should be able to replicate or resemble nature's processes in our modern uh, societies and economies. So that is for, for me like the, the inspiring part of this whole idea of circular economy, that I do believe that it's possible and but it's only possible if we are all in agreement that this is necessary and we all see a, a value added uh, role uh, or a role into this whole process so the challenge ahead is actually getting more change agents involved getting more people inspired getting more people inspired and activated so when we reach critical masses of people that are aligned um, big things can happen so i'm very excited about that and i believe that our region is ready for it. I agree completely. Thank you very much, Kevin DeCuba, co-founder of the America Sustainable Development Foundation and the Circular Economy Platform of the Americas. I will be back, as you know, in um, Colombia in two weeks' time, and I look forward to seeing you again in Medellin, Colombia, after I have uh, made my presentation at the Cali Epicenter uh, event uh, for, the, for the mayor of Cali. And uh, I look forward to talking to you some more about the sharing economy and how that uh, takes place in cities as part of the development and implementation of the circular economy. Thanks very much, Kevin. Thank you very much. While recording this podcast, I've been drinking a special blend of Colombian coffee prepared especially for the Universidad del Bosque in Bogota. It was a gift from the rector for which I am very grateful. It reminds me of the trip I took up the Andes Mountains to pick coffee beans for myself. I wanted to see what it takes to get my morning cup of joe. It's tough work for long hours in difficult conditions. I only picked beans for a few minutes, maybe enough for one cup of coffee. I couldn't imagine this being my livelihood every day. The pickers carry their haul down to be weighed at the end of the shift and get paid a small sum for however much they picked. Their daily grind allows you to have your daily grind of coffee. And I hope you are very grateful and pay for a good fair trade um, coffee. And now I have a much better appreciation and respect for what the pickers have to do for my morning wake up mug of Colombian coffee. And I need to be prepared to pay well for it, as do you. 
Like in much of agriculture, the farm workers pay is minimal in relation to the price we pay at the shelf. Please, please do choose coffee that's fair trade certified where companies are actively paying workers appropriately aiming for a living local wage. Use your purchasing power to direct companies to make the changes you want to see in the world. Tell them the status quo just won't do. Go on social media, tell them what you want, demand change, force them to listen, listen with the power of our collective voices. Change will be relegated to the basuero of the past. No more unsustainable linear economy. If they tell you they don't know what it is or they don't know how, tell them you know someone who does and send them to me. Until next time, this is Ken Alston signing off with the Circularity Edge podcast. Viva la revolution! You've been listening to the Circularity Edge podcast. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes or Google Play to get new, fresh weekly episodes. For more, please follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, or visit our website at www.kenalston.com. Until next time, bye, Circular. Circular.